Green. Yes. Are you staring at me? I'm totally staring at you. <laughs> All the better to see you with Marsha. Did you like blink or something? I would if I had eyelids. <laughs> <laughs> but this model doesn't have eyelids, does no, it? No, no. No. All right, guys. We are looking at the eye today. This and is an eyelidless. This eye. is uh, kind of a mildly creepy cutout of the eye inside half a quarter of a skull. I was looking at you, kid. <laughs> Oh, to all my pupils out there. Oh, God. You're in great form today, Green. <laughs> okay, so we're looking at this eye, and you can see the almost the entire orbital cavity here, surrounded by the well, we got maxilla down there, the zygomatic bone, hey, and let's see, it went backwards. There we go. Zygomatic, zygomatic maxilla. There we go. Yeah. Back on track. The frontal bone the top, the nasal bone, and then the lacrimal bone. So here we can also see a lot of the muscles, and if we pan over here to the side, and above, you can see all of the muscles. Those are our extrinsic eye muscles. They are skeletal muscles. These are the ones that are going to help you turn your eye, rotate your eye, roll your eyes when we're making really corny jokes. <laughs> and those are, again, all skeletal muscles, meaning we have complete control over them. So from here, one of the things you can see on the lacrimal bone in the corner of the eye is the lacrimal duct or the nasolacrimal duct that connects your eye to your nose, which again is one of the reasons that when your eyes water and you cry, your nose gets runny. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna look at two, I think, of the other models right here to get a better look at a lot of the pieces that we have to look at. And the first thing you see on the eyeball on the right is the lacrimal gland. Now this is basically our tear gland. It's going to make tears, and this is going to be on the lateral side of the eye. So it is going to rush across the eye, cleaning off the eye, and then, of course, heading off to your nose so you can, you know, get sniffly while you are teary-eyed. So on your list, there's a whole bunch of things, eyelashes, eyebrows. We'll look at those on the real eye because these don't have any. Yeah. Unfortunately, I guess. So we're gonna start with the fibrous tunic. This is gonna be the outer layer of the eye. There are two pieces, the sclera, which is the white part. So all of the white part of the eye. Um, and the cornea, which is going to be the transparent, clear portion that happens to be missing on I'm the eye. Left. I'm a little left. But it's over here. Yeah, so that's what like our contacts are gonna sit right on top of if you're lucky enough not to be able to see when you wake up in the morning. So as we open up the eyes, we go from the fibrous tunic to the vascular tunic. So vascular means we're gonna have what? Vessels. Vessels, blood vessels running through it. So there's a few pieces on here and starting with the choroid. So the choroid is gonna be touching the sclera and on this model here, it is actually the reddish brown layer that's gonna go all the way around. So not the yellow part, but the reddish layer that's in between it. That's gonna be our choroid. And then the ciliary body on this model is gonna be the black part. You can't see the suspensory ligaments very well on this model at all. So we could look at the other one. Back to the little guy. Little one. So on here you can see the choroid is that brown layer. And if we open up that brown layer inside, the reddish layer that looks kind of frilly, that's going to be the ciliary body, and then the white portion there are the suspensory ligaments. Their job is going to be to hold on to the lens, which is that little marble type thing uh, that sits attached to the suspensory ligaments, and the ciliary body is actually going to be a smooth muscle that helps us to adjust so we can see close or far away. And the other portion that's still part of our vascular tunic is the iris. The iris is what we always call the colored part of our eye. So this little eye is blue, and the big one was brown. That's in the iris. And then the hole that's smack dab in the middle is the pupil. So the pupil is not actually a thing at all. Poking it in the eye. <laughs> it's just an empty space, right? Um, and the iris is also going to be a smooth muscle that's going to help control the size of the pupil. Now if we look deep to the choroid, <laughs> we'll have the retina. Right, so if we turn over these 
coroids, that lightish tan colored thing is going to be the retina. And there are two dots at the back side of the retina. The optic disc, which is the spot where the optic nerve leaves the posterior side of the eye. And then the macula luteae, fovea centralis, is the purple dot on that model and is the yellow dot. If we remove the big ball there, maybe, without losing the lens. Yeah. That yellow dot back there is going to be on that model, the fovea centralis macula luteae. Now we have to talk a little bit about the cavities. Now there are two cavities, an anterior and a posterior. The anterior cavity is going to be everything in front of the lens. Okay, so from where the cornea would be to the back of the lens is going to be our anterior cavity. Now there are two parts of the anterior cavity. I'm going to look straight down on this. There is the anterior chamber of the anterior cavity, nothing like a mouthful, that is going to be between the iris and the cornea. And then the posterior chamber of the anterior cavity, which is going to be between the iris and the lens right there. And this will all be filled with aqueous humor. <laughs> That's funny. And, and we're going to be making that aqueous humor for our entire lives. You'll never stop. Now behind the lens is going to be the posterior cavity, which is filled with the vitreous humor, which is represented with the big plastic ball on pretty much all of our models. Now this, you don't get to make any more, ever. <gasps> You're stuck with it. And if you ever watch crime shows like I watch a little too much of, you know that the birds are gonna go in there and eat the eye juices. What does it do? <laughs> what does this vitreous humor do, Marsha? It holds the retina there. Right. Keeps it pushed up against the choroid. And as we look at the real eye, the sheep eye, um, we'll be able to see how flexible the retina really is. It'll pull right off there. This also hold, maintains the shape of the back of the eye as well. Otherwise, we'll end up with flat eyes. Yeah, that would be bad. Yeah, well, the, the birds would get to it a little bit easier. Okay. All right, I think we're good. We're good. Right, awesome. On to the real eye. Mm -hmm.